Hi there, welcome to Sukkot Before Sukkot. Today we're continuing Perek Gimel Mishneh Ches. The mitzvah of the Lula of the Esrog, the Hadassim and Narobis is not just to have them, but is of course to bind them together and make the bracha over them as they are together. And this is what the Mishnah discusses in Mishneh Ches. Ein oigdin es of elo minoy. When we bind, the Lula of it can only be bind with its own kind, which means one has to use any part of the palm tree, even if it's the, just the bark of the palm tree, but one can only use its own kind to bind it. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda, these are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the Torah actually requires that we don't just put them together, but that we bind them together. Consequently, if you're going to have any other kind using a cord or using something which is not of their kind, it would be like taking a fifth kind, the Torah says that we take only four and not five. And therefore, if we bind them, or when we bind them, sorry, when we have to bind them, we have to use the kind of the lulav um, itself. Rabbi Meir disagrees and he says, Rabbi Meir, Oimer, afilu one can even bind it with cord, with something else. The reason is because Rabbi Meir does not actually require that they be bound together. They just have to be held together. And therefore, if you use something else over there, it's not considered like taking a fifth kind. Um, but nevertheless, Rabbi Meir does agree that the best way to do it is not to bind it with um, with anything but the kind from the lulav itself. And that's why even those holders will be used, will be made from pieces of the lulav itself. It carries on the Mishnah and says, Omer Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir says, it happened once with the men of Yerushalayim that they were binded with gold wire which means that obviously it was not as Rabbi Yehuda says that it was the kind of the lulav but it was gold wire um, which they bound it all together with Amrulai the Chachamim said to Rabbi Meir that is not a proof because they said to him that they would actually bind it with its own kind underneath which means that these noble Jews of Yerushalayim first tied together the lulav and the other kinds with material of its own kind and then in order to glorify it and make it more beautiful they would put a different kind they would, they would put that golden they would use those golden wires on top nevertheless the halacha is still like Rabbi Meir that one can um, bind it with everything, even though, of course, that is not the preferred thing to do. Carries on the Mishnah and says, Now we know that technically speaking, all you need to do is place them together and you've already done the mitzvah. That's called lekicha, taking it, which is what the Torah requires. Nevertheless, what we do is that we also shake it. We don't just shake it when we hold it, when we make the bracha, but also during the halal. And this is what the Mishnah talks about. The Mishnah says, At which point in the halal, did they wave? Did they shake the lulav? Says the Mishnah, Lashem At the Hoidul Hashem, which is at the beginning of that capital Kuf Yud Ches of chapter 118 in Tehillim, and then also at the Hoidul Hashem at the very at the very end. There's two Hoidul Hashems. One is at the beginning, one's at the end, and that's the place to 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 shake it. Another place is also but Ono Hashem There's a pasuk in the in 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 over there which says. Please Hashem be our salvation and please Hashem make us successful. So this opinion says that we shake the lulav only when saying which is about salvation. However, on that part, according to this opinion, we don't shake it. These are the words of Beis Hilo. Beis disagrees and they say, also on that part of since it's part of the same posuk, we shake the lulav there as well. The halacha, of course, follows like Basilo. We only shake the lulav at Ono Hashem Hoshiano, and of course, in at the Hoydul Hashem Kitoiv Kilo Elam Chazdoi at the beginning and the end of uh, of of that part of the halal. I used to watch, I saw, I was watching Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Yeshua. All the people were waving their lulavim. Um, they would only shake at Ono Hashem Moshiyono, not at Ono Hashem Hatzlichono. Carries on the mission and says, Misha Baba Derech, Wallah Hayu Biyodoi, Lulav Lito. If someone had arrived from a journey, we did not have a Lulav at hand to use. This is, of course, talking in Cholamoy, those intermediate days when the person would be allowed, is allowed to go on a trip, and he didn't have a Lulav. Look, she, Connors, now this guy comes home 
and he hasn't done the mitzvah, and what the Mishnah is talking about, he settles down to have a meal, which in the first instance is wrong to do, because any mitzvah at hand to do, rabbinically one has to do the mitzvah before eating. When he comes into his house, if he remembers when he's sitting at his meal, he should interrupt his meal, and take the lul of esrog al shukhanai at his table at his meal. Lo in natal shakris. In the first instance, one should also take the lulav, do the mitzvah first thing in the morning. If he didn't do it first thing in the morning, he told by narbaim, then he should do it in the afternoon, meaning he should fulfill the mitzvah at the first possible opportunity. Shakal hayoyim kosher le lulav because the entire day is kosher. One is allowed to shake the lulav throughout the entire day. Mitzvah Hashem tomorrow will continue with Mishnah Yud over here and then go on to finish the rest of this parak and hopefully the rest of the Masechda. I wish you a wonderful day and have a Shana Tova Masukah Ksivu Chasimah Tova to you and your family and everyone.